1964, Vince's first year at Georgia. Place kicker Bob Etter turns tragedy into triumph, picking up a bad snap on a late field goal attempt and scoring the winning touchdown. 1970, the Gators trail 17-10 in the fourth when John Reeves and Carlos Alvarez team up for two long scoring passes as Florida comes back to win. 1973, Florida quarterback Don Gaffney throws for a two-point conversion late in the game for an 11-10 victory. But the very next year, Gaffney's magic fails. His two-point pass attempt falls incomplete with 28 seconds left, and Georgia wins by one. 1975, the end-around pass from Richard Appleby to Gene Washington covers 80 yards with under three minutes remaining, and the dogs come back. 1980, the play. With just over a minute left, Buck Ballou finds Lindsey Scott across the middle. 93 yards later, Georgia has an incredible comeback victory and the eventual national championship. In a series that is a true classic, there have been many heroes and storybook endings. And 1987's chapter unfolds next on the floor of the Gator Bowl. Red and black versus orange and blue. You can see the battle lines drawn by the team colors. It's the 65th meeting between these two schools, and it's too close to call. SEC 87 is next, as 16th-ranked Florida meets number 10, Georgia. Welcome to the 7-Up Blind Taste Test. Go ahead, try another one. This is rancid milk, man. What is that, dishwater? Yes, it is. Next. <laughs> Not as refreshing as 7-Up, is it? One left, more right. <laughs> You're sick, man. Fresh squeezed this morning. See? 7-Up tastes better. Ah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Next. This lady and her husband paid their life insurance premiums on time for 40 years. When she lost him last fall, the insurance company tried to deny her the benefits and security she had paid for. Who could she turn to? Archie Lamb has earned his reputation helping people like this, working to make sure that the people of Alabama are heard. Unfortunately, this happens all too often in Alabama. I'm Archie Lamb, and if this happens to you, call me. I can help. presentation of SEC football is brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows by Valvoline High Performance Motor Oil. Valvoline because motor oil is not just motor oil. And by Holiday Inn Hotels who salute you. For reservations call 1-800-HOLIDAY or your travel agent. Well, the fans have been getting ready for this game since the day after this game last year, most arrived in town Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The revelry has been hard and heavy, and the fans are ready now. The Georgia Bulldogs say the record between the two is 41-22-2. Florida says 40-22-2. On the left of your screen is Cassius Osborne. He averages 24 yards a kick return. Hampton, number seven on the right side of your screen, averages 21 yards a kick return, but they're not going to be able to because Robert McGinty, with a wind at his back, kicks it out of the end zone. The wind can be a factor here today. Temperature around 70, but the wind out of the northwest, which means left to right as you're viewing the field, at about 20 miles an hour for Georgia. The Bulldogs may go as that man goes. James Jackson, he had a struggle against Kentucky two weeks ago. He gave way to Wayne Johnson in the second half. Todd Wheeler Acres, a very solid interior Georgia offensive line. First and ten Bulldogs. Jackson keeping, getting only a yard or so. He's hit hard 
by 99, Henry Brown. Let's look at the defense for the Florida Gators. They are number one in the conference in stopping the run. Roth is their best defensive lineman. He's playing with a sore ankle. Clifford Charlton has a sore rib cage, their best linebacker for Florida, nicked up across the defensive unit. And in the secondary, Jarvis Williams may play some quarterback today. Williams, Jarvis Williams and Oliver, two fine safeties, good hitters for Florida. Second down nine, Bulldogs. Jackson. Incomplete. Wanted to get it to Osborne out at the 30. It will be third down long. Florida's played well all year on defense, Bob. Talking to Zavin Guralian, the defensive coordinator for the Gators, he's really proud of his uh, charges. They've had a problem in the fourth quarter. They had a problem against LSU. They had a problem against Auburn. They're getting worn down because of the restrictions that have been placed on them with regard to scholarship limitations. They're just not very deep anywhere, and that's a concern for Galen Hall. Third down nine, Georgia. Let's see if Florida comes here at this position on the field. Bulldogs opening possession. Get it to the tailback. Tate does not get the first down. He goes down at the 25-yard line, tackled by 96, Jeff Roth who's tangled up there with 47 Jeff Reuter. And Vince Dooley, just three weeks ago, had to have a heart procedure on two clogged arteries. I talked to him yesterday. He's feeling very well, thank you. One of the Florida players shaken up is 47 Reuter being helped off the field. Looks to be okay at this point, limping slightly. There's Jarvis Williams. He'll be back to take the punt. Reuter is replacing an injured Jason Lambert and uh, really thin at that outside linebacker position. They need Jeff Reuter. Number one is Joey Hester, averaging only 36.5 yards per punt. He'll be punting into the wind, and Jarvis Williams returns at a 14.4 clip. Very good, short punt. Williams takes it on the hop, and Florida opens this game with great field position at the Florida 49-yard line. It was only a 30-yard punt by Hester. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. I'm Andy Jacob. Afraid that you're paying so much interest on your bad credit loan that you'll be in debt forever? Then call me right now for the promise. Loan Giant's new Rate Buster program that promises homeowners payments at 8.5% or less. You heard right. We promise that your payments will be 8.5% or less, even if your credit's bad, by calling the number on your screen. Call 800-305-9533. Welcome to the 7-Up Blind Taste Test. Go ahead, try another one. This is rancid milk, man. What is that, dishwater? Yes, it is. Next. Not as refreshing as 7-Up, is it? One left, more right. <laughs> You're sick, man. Fresh squeezed this morning. See? 7-Up tastes better. Ah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Next. Georgia kept the ball only a minute, 15 seconds. Great field position for this offensive team. Emmett Smith, number two in the nation, number one in the conference in rushing. Kerwin Bell, he's had a disappointing year, but if he gets on a roll, look out. They like David Williams and Bob Sims over on the weak side of the Florida offensive line, meaning the side away from the tight end. First down, 10 Gators from their own 49. Emmett Smith cuts it back. That's what he does so well. Gets about three yards. Bill Goldberg making the stop. He's anchoring the Georgia defensive line. That eight-man front, wide tackle six. Goldberg, number 95, sophomore from Tulsa and the newest member of the Junkyard Dog Club. However, he's playing with a pinched nerve. John Brantley, Georgia's leading tackler. Terry Webster's playing very well, too. And Ben Smith, who came from Northeast Oklahoma Junior College, excellent cornerback. And a good hitter for the Georgia defense. Second down seven, Gators. Bell, plenty of time. Smith, complete. Emmett Smith, first down, Gators at the 40-yard line of Georgia. Will Jones with the stop. Surprisingly enough, Bob, during the season when Florida has had to throw the ball, they haven't been that successful. One of the things that Kerwin has had a problem with is the short ball. Here he comes back. It's his own defense. He knows all the way. I'm going to dump it to Emmett Smith. They'd like to run the football, but I don't think they can not afford to take advantage of the strong wind they have at their back at this time. Florida sets up in a slot left formation on a first and 10 from the Georgia 40. 
play fake. Bell, broken play, loses a yard. Tyrone McClendon will get credit for the tackle. <laughs> play fake. They, they, they faked out Kerwin Bell on that one. <laughs> Kerwin talking to Emmett Smith about the audible. Oftentimes a play is called at the line of scrimmage or the quarterback has an option going to the line of scrimmage. He's got one of two plays that he goes with and that time Emmett, obviously the noise got to him, didn't get the call. Remember, even though he's second in the nation in rushing, Emmett Smith is a true freshman, 18 years old. Delayed handoff to Emmett Smith follows his blocking up to the 40, 38 yard line of Georgia. Ben Smith, number 26 and 60, Terry Webster making the stop for the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia will move their defensive front around. They're playing a little uh, uh, of a 50 front with three down linemen. They're giving a, a more varied look. And they're not going to blitz a lot, but they'll stunt those linebackers in there to try to confuse the offensive blocking scheme of Florida. They say Emmett Smith got all the way to the 36-yard line. That makes it third down six. There's the check off by Bell. Going to throw. Four-man rush by Georgia. It's dropped by Mark Vincent, 15. Should have been intercepted. Bell was looking for Walter Odom overthrew and just barely dodged getting throwing his ninth interception on the year. You know, I'm not sure if he's thrown it at Odom or if Mills runs the wrong pattern. It's hard to tell. That ball is very overthrown. Kerwin Bell usually fairly accurate. The, the problem that he has been having is that he's got those young wide receivers and they have just not been running consistent routes. This is going to be a 53-yard attempt with the wind at the back of the kicker. The wind is aiding the kick, and it is good. That's the longest of the year for Robert McGinty. And the Gators have taken a three to nothing lead on the 53 yard field goal thanks to a wind aided kick. Now glide your way to rock hard abs with Glidemaster XL, the fast, easy way to sculpt all your abdominals. Watch, place the Glidemaster close to your knees, then simply glide out back and forth in front of you. Firm and flatten upper abs, tone and tighten lower abs, or glide from side to side to work and define those hard to reach love handles. Glidemaster's assisted dual resistance provides constant toning with every movement. Watch, sit-ups may work the wrong muscle groups, causing stress on your neck and back, but but Glidemaster XL actually strengthens your back, shoulders, arms, and chest muscles for a whole upper body workout. Now you can order the amazing Glidemaster XL with exercise guide for only $19.99. We guarantee that you'll see amazing results in just 30 days, so glide those abs into shape with Glidemaster XL. Call 800-535-6256 to receive your Glidemaster for only $19.99 plus shipping and handling, or visit us online at 800buyitnow.com. Well, B.C. upsetting Tennessee last week and now giving Notre Dame trouble. However, it's very early there. The Georgia deep backs again. Osborne on the left, Hampton on the right. Florida leads 3-0 on the 53-yard field goal by Robert McGetty, the senior transfer from Auburn University. Hometown is Neptune Beach, Florida. McGetty came into this game 10 out of 14 kicking. And uh, as Galen Hall said, he's the kind of kicker that makes you nervous, but he also has talent and can give you the big kick. So he gave it to him there. Two minutes, 24 seconds. Not much offense for Florida that time. They really did dodge the bullet on the interception drop. Okay, I want you to tell me what type of kicker is a kicker that doesn't make you nervous. <laughs> the only one that never made, it me, made me nervous when I was doing pro football was uh, Tim Mazzetti. Other than that, everyone. Osborne's going to touch it back in the end zone. He wanted to run it out. He could taste the grass, <laughs> but decided to hold it into the end zone, and I think it was good judgment. And now Georgia will bring it out to the 20. They were three downs and out on their first offensive position. If there's one thing Georgia's used to this year, it's being behind. They have come from behind to win in several games. They came from behind against LSU to take the lead late in the fourth quarter. weren't able to hang on to it. But they have been looking uphill most of the year. So they've got certainly a lot of confidence in their ability to fight back. First down 10 from the 20. Georgia tra trailed Virginia, Vandy, and Kentucky by 14 points and won all three of those games. Take for three. Not much more. Florida, number one in the conference in stopping the run, remember. Honors. 
Let's look at Clifford Charlton, Bob. You mentioned he had sore ribs. He just handles the tight end, unloads him, chases Scott Adams out there and makes the play. And that's what Clifford Charlton's been doing for the last three years at Florida. By the way, Pat Moore, who's playing in there with a sore knee, has been out for a while, has replaced Jeff Reuter, who has a knee injury and will be out for the game. Florida already injured, but now they're better yet. Jackson. This is what he does so well. First down, James Jackson to the 34. 12 yards. On the last play, Clifford Charlton won. On this play, you're going to see Clifford Charlton get cut down. When you're playing Georgia, you have to limit the mobility of James Jackson. There's Charlton trying to fight off the blocker, doesn't do it. And Alfonso Ellis put him on the ground, and Jackson scoots upfield. James Jackson, as we said at the beginning of the game, is a real variable. If he has a hot game and can really sprint out and use his running ability, he's a really funny for it. A gain of about five on the handoff from Lars Tate. Gerald Dickens, number 40, first stop for the Gators. Florida leading three to nothing. 10-14 to go, first quarter at the Gator Bowl. Vince Dooley has never lost two games in a row in Florida during his 23 prior seasons. His record is 15-7-1 against the Gators. Never lost two in a row. Second down five from the 39. In motion, Nate Lewis. Pitch to Tate. Florida plays the sweep well. Tate gets two or three across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. He was hit by 45, Pat Moore. Lars Tate's next touchdown will put him into second place on the all-time touchdown scoring list at the University of Georgia behind, behind guess who? Who's way out in front. He's kind of the Babe Ruth of touchdown scoring. Herschel. <laughs> Herschel Walker. Sadowski and Warner double tight ends in for Georgia on a third down two. Jackson. Going to keep it and get the first down to the 45-yard line. Picks up for Georgia, first down. Now the, the red and black section of the Gator Bowl erupts. It's 50-50. One of the reasons this is such a great classic rivalry is the neutral site. And I'm, when I say 50-50, folks, they, they could put barbed wire up here between like they do in Europe for soccer matches. <laughs> but so far, they haven't had to do that. First down 10, Georgia from the Bulldogs, 45. Jackson pulls it down down after a gain of three at the 48 yard line Jarvis Williams with the stop one thing you looks as though you'll see all afternoon Bob is Alfonso Ellis or Lars Tate trying to chop that outside linebacker from Florida they want to get that outside contained person for Florida's defense on the ground give Jackson some room to see downfield on the outside throw and also cut up carry the bread two youngsters from texas in the backfield rodney hampton brian cleveland for georgia both true freshmen it's the first play ever in his collegiate career for cleveland hampton close to the first down cleveland is from claremont texas hampton from houston both highly recruited and vince dooley had wanted to save brian cleveland and red shirting but because of hiawatha berry's injury keith henderson of course is not active this year ellis has a groin he's had to activate the true freshman brian cleveland and as we talked before the game bob even though they could make it through this game without him they've got some tough ones coming up they'll need cleveland look out Hampton for the first down to the 38-yard line of Florida. The tackle by 98, James Spear, and Hampton is an electric running back. Let's watch the offensive line of Georgia work. Watch him fire out on the ball. See number 69, Burroughs. Adams blocking down. Kim, Kim Stevens, 68, pulling. And Hampton gets right in their tail. Now, watch a big play here by number 18, Lewis Oliver. Great downfield tackler. On the first down, Jackson fakes and passes. Misses everybody. Looks like a broken pass reception route, possibly. Troy Sadowski, possibly, the intended receiver. Say all that with an asterisk, because the way that pass play developed, it's hard to tell. I got, I got a feeling that passes today for Georgia are going to be like commas in a paragraph. Every once in a while, you're going to see one, but you're not going to see many of them. Uh, 
Vince Dooley wants to keep the ball on the ground and wear out this Gator defense. He, they feel like they can move it on the turf. Tenth play of the Georgia drive. Second down 10 from the Florida. 38. Gators lead 3-0 midway through the first quarter. Jackson. Goes down. They're going to spot it at the 35-yard line. He got a couple of yards after he had to scramble. Clifford Charlton will receive credit for the tackle. The problem that James Jackson gives you on defense in terms of pass coverage is you're almost afraid to lock up man-to-man -man underneath. You don't want those linebackers turning away from the quarterback because of his ability to motor the ball down the field. Third down seven from the 35. Georgia conversion play here. Third down long, but the 35 of the Gators. Two freshmen are back there. Protecting on the pass. Gators are blitzing. Almost picked off. It was number four, Kerry Watkins, covering. They tried to get it to 24, Osborne. Georgia does not convert, and now Georgia will have an opportunity for a field goal attempt. Let's watch the classic matchup. Receiver against corner. Jarvis Williams doing a good job playing Warner, and Kerry Watkins breaking very well on the ball. Ball thrown a little bit behind Cassius Osborne. That time, Florida electing the blitz. The pressure Jackson worked out for the Gators. And they've decided to punt. David Dukes is in, even though the ball's at the 35-yard line. It's against the wind. Dukes is the short punt specialist. Jarvis Williams is going to let it roll out of bounds at the two. David Dukes, the former quarterback from Athens, Georgia, and the senior who is a specialist at the short punt, knocks it out at the two. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. The surgery went fine. Grandma just needed a chance to recover. Her doctor wanted to keep her for a couple of more days, but the HMO wouldn't pay for it, and we didn't have the money. But she wasn't well enough to go home. The next day, she was so sick, we had to rush her back to the hospital. Now they aren't sure if she's going to make it. The waiting is agony. Why did this have to happen? This didn't have to happen. I'm Archie Lamb. Don't you think your doctor should have the final say in your family's medical decisions? Join us now in the fight for sensible HMO reform. What does it take to compete in the Southeastern Conference? The same stuff it takes to outperform in the global marketplace. In the field of travel technology, WorldSpan is the class, the franchise player, the go-to guy. Corporate travel comments up with airline automated internet travel technology. WorldSpan, proud partner of the SEC. It was a 33-yard punt by David Dukes, but that's not what's important. What's important is that Dukes, the former QB, knocked it out at the two. Now, we were here in 1984, and we saw Ricky Matil go 96 yards. First down, 10 Gators lining up in their own end zone. Two pure freshmen back there for the Gators, too. Penalty markers down. Willie McGrady and Emmett Smith are the two true freshmen in the backfield for Florida. I believe 77 Sims may have moved there. We'll just hold up for a moment here. Get the ruling. Dead ball fall. Ball starts. Rom Gilbert is the referee. Watch for 77 left guard or the guard. Number 77, Bob Sims, jumping just a little bit early, firing off. Tough to hear down there. A lot of folks here that are excited. And now it's first and 11, and now everybody on Florida's team's in the end zone. Bell just keeps it, tries to get a couple of yards out of there. Doesn't, certainly doesn't want to turn it over here. Now Florida's having deja vu from last week at Auburn. They had bad field position most of the game. But they certainly have seen the football field from this perspective. Uh, last year, they started on the average minus 13-yard line. Galen, of course, was concerned about that. The uh, fumble on the opening kickoff, the second half, uh, they, they, so that Auburn gets the ball going in. But Kerry Watkins stepped out of bounds on their own four-yard line. A couple of punting situations backed them up. This will be second down 10 after Bell got only one on the first and 11. Gives it to Emmett Smith behind the left side of the line gets out near the four yard line larry brown making the tackle for georgia now remember the wind is to the back of the gators here it's obviously normally a passing situation on third down and let's see where they spot it it'll be about third and seven but 
Do you dare risk a pass down here? You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. If you're going to lose this team, the game, let the other team beat you. You don't want to commit a critical error at this time in the football game. Kerwin Bell saying, where or oh where is Ricky Mateo? Richard Starowski, the right guard for Florida, leaned up to point at the player he was going to block as they were communicating in the offensive line. And the yellow flags came down. Kerwin Bell giving him a little talk in the huddle. Saying, come on, you rascals, let's get it together, let's be poised. They may not have shot themselves in the foot, but they he certainly looked, hit their toe. He looked like they get the snap count. Williams moved and Starwesky moved. Now, what might be happening is that the Georgia defensive linemen are, are making the sound of the uh, hut, hut. Now it's third and ten. They give it to the fullback, McGrady. The freshman gets to the five, that's it. Brantley stopped at 42. So now, how do you like to beat Jamie McAndrew? The Florida punter will be putting his heels right on the edge of that white chalk mark. He has the wind to his back. McAndrew will be taking a look at only an eight-man rush because Georgia's put three deep here to try to get a return. Georgia's sure to get some good field position out of this. Punt. It is fair caught at the 34-yard line. The man with the ball is Mike Bowen. A 29-yard punt. McAndrews needed about a 59-yard. He got one for 29, and the Bulldogs trailing three to nothing with 404 to go in the first have great field position. You can't ask for much better than this, Bob, on the 34-yard line. And this is what happened to Florida last week against Auburn. Auburn had devised an excellent game plan defensively, played a very good game on offense against Florida. The field position certainly in the uh, favor of the Auburn Tigers. So Florida is not unfamiliar with this situation. Well, give the credit to David Dukes, who put it out of bounds at the two, and then a good defensive stand by Georgia. They had him bottled up. That's Tate, nine yards to the 25. Check it. It's fullback Alfonso Ellis, the true freshman. Watch that offensive line fired out again. 68, Kim Stevens, 63, Todd Wheeler. Kirk Warner doing a nice job, number 83, and the running of Alfonso Ellis. Amazing that Florida has two true freshmen starting in their backfield, and Georgia at times will have two true freshmen, Hampton and Ellis, in their backfield. There are three of them playing today, Ellis, Cleveland, and Hampton. <laughs> Lars Tate gets the first down to about the 22-yard line. They say his forward progress took him to the 19-yard line. First down, 10, Georgia. One of the things Euralian talked about before the game was the fact that their defense had to come up with some big plays, and this is a perfect time for it in this particular drive. If they could take the ball away from Georgia, it'd be a big momentum changer. First down, Tate Nellis in the backfield. Lars Tate. Nice stutter step. Tate to the 14. Tackle. 56, Clifford Charlton. Another fine job of blocking by Alfonso Ellis, that time on Jarvis Williams. Both true freshman fullbacks for Georgia and Florida, Willie McGrady for Florida, are both excellent blockers, and they both do a tremendous amount to create space for those great tailbacks. Georgia staying with a double tight end, second down, five. Zellis hit from behind he gets about a yard if that who was it knifed in there Jeff Roth the nose guard got around the blocker and knifed down Ellis as you mentioned Bob Jeff Roth playing injured the freshman and sophomore All-American has made progress and just turning into an excellent nose guard Vince Dooley watches Vince is going to remain calm he's not going to get excited <laughs> third down four Georgia from the 14. Lars Tate breaks the tackle to the two-yard line. Penalty markers down. Watkins with a tackle. Lewis Oliver had a shot at him. Make that Dickens and then missed it. I think.
think you're going to see the first guy to have a shot at him, Bob, is going to be Jarvis Williams. Tate takes it, and this is just brought. He gives a move to Williams. Williams, one of the best tacklers on Florida's team, runs through the tackle of Lewis Oliver, and finally Kerry Watkins gets there to drag him to the turf. And at the end, tag on a face mask. It won't be a significant penalty because it'll just be half the distance. But Lewis Oliver, Jarvis Williams are the number two and three tacklers on this Georgia defense. They're, they're both excellent tacklers, and that's just a fine, fine job of power running by Lars Tate. First and goal from the one. Florida three, Georgia nothing. 132 to go first quarter. Tate, touchdown. Lars Tate, penalty markers down at the line of scrimmage. Gilbert, the official. Offside, defense, force on the kickoff, touchdown. Offsides on the defense, it'll be enforced on the kickoff, but the touchdown stands, and Lars Tate has now moved into second place on the all-time Georgia touchdown parade behind Herschel Walker, and he moved past Charlie Trippi, the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy in 1946. Bob, you talked about the kicking game, the fact that would play an important factor this afternoon, and David Duke sticking it out on the two-yard line. Give Georgia an opportunity to get that touchdown. John Casey, the freshman's point after is good. Dukes was the holder on that, and now Georgia leads 7-3 with 127 to go. Quarter number one. Blue Cross Blue Shield is ahead of most companies in trying to help the physicians provide better care. Patients can't remember which tests were done, through the Unfold Solutions program, that information is available online. So that means that I can make a better decision as far as the quality of care that I can give that patient. Blue Cross Blue Shield, they're being good citizens to, uh, to meet the needs of the patients and the industry. When they see the need, they, they respond. The surgery went fine. Grandma just needed a chance to recover. Her doctor wanted to keep her for a couple of more days, but the HMO wouldn't pay for it, and we didn't have the money. But she wasn't well enough to go home. The next day, she was so sick, we had to rush her back to the hospital. Now they aren't sure if she's going to make it. The waiting is agony. Why did this have to happen? This didn't have to happen. I'm Archie Lamb. Don't you think your doctor should have the final say in your family's medical decisions? Join us now in the fight for sensible HMO reform. Well, this is the week prior to the Gator Bowl. On Monday, Dooley is down talking to the Jacksonville Quarterback Club. Tuesday, the fans begin to arrive and get ready. Wednesday, the Gators pep rally down by the river. Thursday, the Georgia Bulldog Club holds a meeting. <laughs> and Friday, the dogs and Gators party together. That's at the landing on the St. John's River. What a week it's been. It's like a bowl game, no question about it. In my opinion, sometimes more exciting than a bowl game because of the rivalry. This is Simmons. Down at the 21. Oh, that had to make the Florida coaches hold their breath. 57 Lewis with the tuck. Now the second leading touchdown scorer in Georgia football history, Stacy Simmons. One thing I'm sure the Florida coaches are working with him on is getting it up field. We saw him against Miami last week against Auburn. He's got that lat tries to stretch the defense laterally, but look for your first opportunity to go toward the end zone. First down, 10 Gators from the 21-yard line. It's 7-3 Georgia. A minute 19 to go, first quarter. Bell's going to throw. Good time. It is complete to Ed Frazier. Out at the 36-yard line, Ben Smith with the tackle. Kerwin Bell puts it right on the, uh, on the money to number one, Ed Frazier. Good job of coverage by the secondary. You're going to see Terry Webster, number 60, running to try to get to that curl area, but just a well-thrown ball. Frazier from Greenville, North Carolina. First down 10 from the 38-yard line. Emmett Smith cutting back. 40 and no more. Gain of a yard and a half. John Brantley was there. Rambo, as they call him. You get a kick out of the Georgia uh, publicity. They call Brantley the white player Rambo. 
Bow and Webster, the black linebacker, Ram Pro. And I'll tell you what, those two are about as tough inside as you're going to find. You know, and Terry Webster, Georgia has survived with folks like uh, Brantley and Boswell and, and Culpepper, but Terry Webster has got the real, real athletic skill to be a great linebacker. Second down eight from the 40. Florida trailing 7-3. It's complete to Simmons. He went out of bounds at the 40, they're saying. There's an official marking it at the 40, but he's going to try to score. Now he goes on this side to the 5, but let's hold it. An official backup field said he went out near the 40. So the Gator fans are happy, but it's not going to be 55 yards. Let's watch it again. This is vintage Kerwin Bell. Has time to set up, loves to throw it down the field. Don't give me any of that short junk. I want to throw it down the field. Simmons, nice catch, nice catch. Right there, he goes out of bounds. Good call and a great replay. Once again, our director, Tom Smith, and our fine TBS crew, our producer, Skip Ellison. Tom, of course, a Gator, and Skip, a Bulldog. And you guys stay away from each other down there finish the game. Right, you can see smoke coming out of the truck. <laughs> well, the Gators now moving the ball well, and like you said, Tim, here's Rom Gilbert, the referee, like you said, if Bell gets into a rhythm, look out. That's correct, because he can put the ball on the money. Saw him in watching film this week, saw him throw it outside sideline pattern all the way across the field in the Auburn game to a pretty well covered wide receiver. He's got the ability to put the ball wherever he wants to if he's got the time. Three out of four for 45 yards so far. First down 10 at the 40 Gators. Trailing 7-3. Probably the last play of the first quarter. Hands the ball to 23. That's Wayne Williams to the 25-yard line. Mark Vincent with the tackle. A gain of 15 from the almost forgotten tailback, Wayne Williams, the junior from Titusville. Fine job of running by Wayne Williams. Doesn't force this hole to open. Just kind of sits and waits. Very patient. He's not there. I'm going to follow McGrady. That's a good choice. Now he breaks the tackle, runs through Guthrie, cuts it upfield. Good job of running by Wayne Williams at the quarter end. At the end of the first, Georgia leads 7-3. The Gators are driving. We've got a beauty on our hands. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. The NCAA thanks its corporate partners who dedicate financial resources, talent, and expertise to help emphasize the vital role intercollegiate athletics plays in society and in the overall development of student athletes. The support of higher education by these outstanding corporate citizens also provides funding for NCAA youth programs and NCAA championships. The NCAA and its corporate partners together building a better experience for our student athletes. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. My credit card debt was outrageous. Then I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and got my payments almost cut in half. Ameridad is a nonprofit organization that offers free consultations to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. Every month, I pay our credit card bills, but the balances never seem to get smaller. Ameridad got our interest rates reduced, and now the balances are dropping dramatically. Call 800-535-6256. Those cars going across the bridge in the St. John River are hurrying to a television set so they can catch the second quarter. Georgia leads Florida 7-3. Gators driving. First down 10. Penalty markers down. To the 23-yard line goes Wayne Williams. John Brantley with the stop. Now Wayne Williams does not carry the ball very much. Emmett Smith is usually back there. I don't think anything's wrong with Emmett. But this is early. Penalty against Florida. We'll keep our eyes open, see if anything's happened with Emmett Smith. I don't believe so. He's standing on the far sideline, as is Emmett Smith at the 40-yard line, so I think he's okay. But he's out of the game momentarily. Rom Gilbert with the call on the penalty. Holding. Offense. Back to the 36-yard line. Florida with about twice as many penalty yardage per game as Florida. About nearly 70 yards a game in penalties. That's the thing that really jumped out at me, Bob, as I reviewed the statistics. I think 52 to 30, and as you said, almost twice as much yardage. And 
And Florida offensively, when they've gotten behind against Miami, against uh, First down, against Auburn last week, 20, hurt themselves the with penalties. First down 20 from the 36 Gators. Bell with a check off, two receivers right, one left. Good job picking him up. Whistle sounded. Penalty marker in the defensive play. backfield. May have been the 25 second clock expiring. That's where the flag is usually tossed in the defensive secondary. And they're discussing it right now. Richard Tardit's coming into the game. The pass rush defense for Georgia is now in the game. And talking to Dave Lewis, the defensive coordinator, he said in definite passing situations, we're going to get Dead more. Lewis, number Delay 57. Offense. And Richard Tardit's into the game. Good athletes. They can pressure the quarterback. Let's go to Atlanta for this college football update. Thank you, Bob. Big Ten leader Michigan State. Spartans haven't been to the Rose Bowl in 22 years, but Lorenzo White, the Heisman hopeful, puts it in from one yard out. It's 7 to nothing. Michigan State. Back to Bob. That's another weekend of Purdue on the wrong end of the score for you, Tim. I want to see the Northwestern score. First down, 25. Bell looks at the rush. They're pressuring him down. He goes at the 49-yard line. Remember now, Florida has to go to the 16 for a first down. Now watch this. Here's why Bill Lewis puts number 92, Richard Tardich, in the game. Coming from the outside, Morris Lewis. Look at those rascals coming around in there. Whoop. They beat Jimmy Davis on the outside, beat the block of the back, and they're in Kerwin Bell's face. Tart excuse me, Tardich, the Frenchman. He was a player of the week, SEC player of the week. One week because he got three sacks and Cause the quarterback to rush his throw four times. Really showing off. Five and a half sacks on the year. Targets. Second down, 33. Bell overthrows everybody. It's picked off at the 29-yard line. That's Ben Smith. Bill Lewis says he's his best defensive back since he's been here, and Bell is shaken up. He's all right. He's up and going off the field. Bell slow to get up. Once again, you're going to see two receivers in the same area. Bell unloads it, lays it out there. There's no way that that pattern should end up like that. Ernie Mills and Walter Odom could have touched each other, and that's not how the play is designed. Bell lets it go and gets whacked by Aaron Chubb. And it's kind of staggered off the field. We'll keep our eye on uh, Kerwin Bell, see how he is. Bulldogs lead 7-3 and have the ball first down 10 from their own 29. Ben Smith with the interception. Hampton stopped after a game of about two. Big defense by Georgia there, Bob. Florida rolling, moving the ball, marching the ball down the field, throwing it, running well. Come up with a couple of big sacks and in interception by Ben Smith. That's what you've got to do to win this football game. You've got to make the big plays on defense. We're looking at Kerwin Bell's right hand, of course, is throwing in. Not much to back Kerwin Bell up in terms of quarterbacks with experience or ability. A quick toss out to the naked screen to number eight, Nate Lewis, the speed merchant. It's a Georgia first down to the 41. Williams with a tackle, gain of 10. Now, this is an automatic for Georgia. It's something that exists between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Oftentimes, there's not coverage out there. They sense a blitz, bang, pop it out there to the wide receiver and hopes they can break a tackle. There's Kerwin Bell's hand. Looks like the navicular bone in the wrist. It does, and that's a good idea. First down, 10 Georgia. They're from their own 42. Lewis in motion. Hampton. What acceleration. The 46, 47 yard line. And down he goes. Tackled by 99 Henry Brown. Pepe Lascano is the backup quarterback for Florida. Lascano's a senior from Plantation, Florida. Has played very little and frankly, is simply a yeoman kind of quarterback. He's not a guy who can really make it happen for the Gators. Well, his dad played for the Gators, and he was actually a manager three years ago, and they got into quarterback trouble, and he played against Miami. He's played sparingly during the year, but as you said, great loss. Second down five. Hampton stumbles and then regains his balance. 
first down Georgia and now that Georgia ground game is grinding it out as they are so good at doing now watch number 50 Kirk Mull you see Roth scoot around now there's Charlton gets chopped down and you it's coming into your picture right here Mull just stays right with Dick and stays in his face that's 10 yards downfield you gotta you gotta get you gotta make that play about three yards seven yards farther west than that first down 10 from the 46 yard line Bulldogs in motion Osborne off to Alfonso Ellis, the fullback, to the 41-yard line. He stopped by 98 James Spear, the redshirt Spear, the redshirt freshman from Miami. Alfonso Ellis, the 18-year-old freshman from Thomasville, Georgia, and his backup's an 18-year-old from Claremont, Texas. And remember, though, Hiawatha Berry, who's injured, will be back next year, as will Keith Henderson. And Georgia's going to be in pretty good shape in the backfield in terms of running backs. Tim Worley due back and tailback along with Rodney Hampton. Second down six. 41. Hampton. Short of the first down to about the 37. Charlton with his fifth tackle of the game for Florida. They're your freshman back. They just, I was talking to Galen Hall about that. Isn't it unusual to have this many true freshmen? We're not talking red shirts here. True freshmen. And he felt that one of the reasons that this was happening was because of negative recruiting. In other words, Georgia's going to have a hard time recruiting an excellent running back this year simply because of Rodney Hampton. Just like Florida has had a hard time recruiting a quality quarterback because they know they're going to sit down behind Kerwin Bell. Third down two at the 38-yard line. Tate close to and gets the first down. Dickens with the stop, but not until Lars Tate picked up the first down to the 30. Five yard line. That's a first down for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs drive stays alive, leading 7 3, 9 51 to go in the first half. You're going to play Georgia, you've got to be patient on defense. Aurelian knows that as he's calling the defensive signals from the sideline. You have to expect Georgia to move the football, and you've got to come up with critical third down plays. 32 take, 37 Cleveland in the backfield for the Bulldogs. Take. Hit in the backfield. Knifing through Gerald Dick Dickens, the senior, and the leading tackler on this team. You see why. Here's why first down is so important. Uralian said he's going to stunt the inside linebackers, not pull out blitz, stunt the inside linebackers to create some havoc in the Georgia backfield. And good job by Gerald Dickens. Timeout Georgia, their first of three. 9.08 to go in the second quarter. Bulldogs lead 7-3, and it'll be second down 12 when we return. You're watching SEC Football on the Turner Broadcasting System. How much would you pay for these leather-bound classics? too long ago and it's already rotten there's got to be better material well dad burn it jimmy is that any way to treat it treat it yeah osmo's pressure treated pine from great southern wood has a lifetime warranty against rotting decay so remember if it doesn't say osmos on the yellow tag believe me you don't want it dad burn it jimmy you getting old well now it's getting serious BC leading 17 to 6, upsetting Tennessee last week. Second and 12, Georgia from the 37. Georgia leading here 7 to 3. 9.08 to go in the second quarter. Jackson tucks it and falls down after a gain of only a couple at about the 33 or 34 yard line. We talked Getting about Kerwin Bell being aided off the oh, field. He had a sore right wrist. They were looking at his wrist area. He has been throwing the ball, testing it. We don't know what his shape is yet. Time of possession. Georgia playing their game. 14 minutes and 36 Third seconds. Down. Their defense has been off the field. This is the way they want it to look. Third down nine from the 34 Bulldogs. Big possession play here. Jackson. Coverage breaks down. Jackson, look how elusive the young man is. 
tried to find Tate. Oh, what a brilliant individual effort by James Jackson. Folks, he didn't just throw that away after scrambling for his life. He was still trying to hurt the Gators. Watch Clifford Charlton here. Second leading sacker in Florida history. He flushes them out. That's J Henry Brown trying to scramble after him. And he makes a dangerous throw here. Well, you, you scramble around that long, throw it across the field, your heart stops if you're a coach for at least five seconds. Steve Crumley is about to attempt a 51-yarder. Straight ahead kicker, went to his back, hits it well. It's good! 51 yards! Steve Crumley has made it 10-3 Bulldogs! From College Sports Central, this is a College Sports Southeast update. I'm D. Jackson. News out of Lexington, the NCAA sent the University of Kentucky an official letter of inquiry. A.D. Larry Ivey says there were no surprises to the letter. The university had already done an internal investigation and discovered over a dozen recruiting violations. Kentucky will respond to the NCAA by October 5th. More after this. Because the elements of surprise are what life is made of. Because the unexpected isn't always a good thing. And because a trip to the doctor isn't always in the game plan. With 17 locations in the Puget Sound area, we're never far from home. How the SEC uses its coaches and sponsors. Get that story later on College Sports Central. I'm D. Jackson. More sports news next hour. By Steve Crumley is the longest of his career. His longest previous was 50. Casey kicking off. That wind doesn't hurt any of these kickers. It helped David Dukes, Georgia's punter, punt against it and out of bounds earlier on the two. Bell is back in. They've, they've got some medical advice from Don Shula, Tim. You'll relate to this. They've taped a, an aspirin to his wrist. You know about that, right? Joe, you bet. You're okay. One thing he's got going for him is there's a tremendous amount of adrenaline running through his body right now, and this is the last shot he's got at the Gators. He'd like to whip him. Excuse me, at the uh, dogs. McGrady and Smith, the freshmen, are in the backfield. First down, 10 from the 20. Woolard in motion. Emmett Smith following the freshman blocker. Smith gets about six out to the 26-yard line. Rusty Beasley Emmett makes the stop. Emmett has not done much yet. Beasley Five carries, 19 Jones yards. Florida drew first blood on a 56. 53-yard wind-aided field goal by Robert Second McGinty down. in the first quarter. Then Georgia came back and got the touchdown. Tate scored. That was in the first quarter. The second quarter, of course, the Georgia drive, the 51-yard field goal by Crumley a moment ago to make it 10-3, Georgia. Smith again. Hit at the line of scrimmage again. First man there was Terry Webster. Number 60. Smith again, the ball carrier, tackled by number 60. Terry what, Webster. Terry Webster? He's a cousin from Haines City, Florida, the cousin of Eddie Meek Cleaver Weaver. And, uh, probably, probably the best athlete on that Florida defense. Good work habits. Excuse me, Georgia defense. Good work habits. It has has got the physical potential to develop into one of the greatest linebackers they've ever had here. Third down to Florida. From their own 28, trailing 10-3. Willard in motion again. Emmett Smith tries for the first down, gets it in a little more to the 36. Emmett Smith. Smith. Will Jones with a stop. That was a gain of eight. Smith now has 30 yards and seven carries. Will Jones. Bill Lewis, defensive coordinator for Georgia, running players in and out. McClendon going into the game. Larry Brown going into the game. Goldberg back into the football game, trying to keep players fresh because they know this game most likely will be decided in the fourth quarter. First down 10 from the 35 yard line now, Gators. Willard getting a lot of yardage laterally on his motion play. Bell, good time to throw. Incomplete. Willard could not hold on to it. As intended. Last week, Willard. Bell really passed the ball well, according to Galen Hall against Incomplete. Auburn, but had four passes dropped. And of course, everybody remembers the Ernie Mills drop pass early in that ball game. And he throws this ball well on a line to the outside. 
You can see Will Jones is in great shape to make the play. Doesn't quite get there, and Willard drops the ball. He had one sail through his hands that ended the game for Florida. It was an interception draw. It's got to be frustrating for Kerwin Bell. Second down, 10 for 35. Oh. Emmett Smith hit in the backfield. He's going to lose a couple. We'll go to our Atlanta studios now for this college football update. Well, more bad news for Purdue, I'm afraid, Bob. Bobby McAllister, the quarterback from Michigan State, spots Andre Rison for a touchdown. It's 21 to nothing, and it's only in the first quarter. Tim Foley has left the booth. He's on his way there for help for Purdue. Right. McAllister and uh, well. Michigan State's got a good passing attack. Excellent passing attack. Rison, good receiver. Illinois leading Indiana. Third down 11. Bell in the pocket. Over the middle. It's complete to Emmett Smith. He's got to go a long way for the first down. Look at this young man. Doesn't get the first down. Out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Miles Smith chased him out. Gain of eight. Emmett Smith, the second leading receiver on this Florida team because that's who they have to go to. Gators give it up. Now. Jamie McAndrew will have to punt into the wind. McAndrew only hit it 29 yards his first time. Gets a good one off. That's Bowen. Penalty markers are down. Bowen gets it at the 20. And gets some tough yardage out to about the 28-yard line. A return of seven, punt of 38. But a penalty marker is down on the play. There's a flag on the field. 5.26 to go, second quarter. Georgia leading 10-3. The call against Florida. And once again, Florida shooting themselves in their toes with the penalties. Georgia has an opportunity to either take it. See Galen there with Jerry Anderson. Jerry was a head coach at Carroll City High School down in Miami. They won the state championship one year. It's, the penalty has declined. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. What does it take to compete in the Southeastern Conference? The same stuff it takes to outperform in the global marketplace. In the field of travel technology, World Span is the class, the franchise player. The go to guy. World Span. Corporate travel. Comment up with airline automated internet travel technology. World Span. Proud partner of the SEC. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. My credit card debt was outrageous. Then I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and got my payments almost cut in half. Ameridad is a nonprofit organization that offers free consultations to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. Every month, I pay our credit card bills. But the balances never seem to get smaller. Ameridad got our interest rates reduced, and now the balances are dropping dramatically. Call 800-535-6256. Florida already with five penalties for 20 yards. They could have had more if they had not occurred so deep in their own territory. First and 10, Georgia. Tate stopped at the 30-yard line. And Jarvis Williams is one of the most effective players on Florida's defense, Bob. Great tackler, good man-to-man -man coverage guy, a starter for three years at corner but he had the physical attributes to play safety and they needed him in the center of that in the center of that defense now you got a new quarterback in there wayne johnson florida is virtually taking jarvis williams out of the play with their alignment second down eight tate stops at the 30. well that's strange to see wayne johnson in there for james jackson who had been playing pretty well i thought we don't have any information as to whether jackson was shaken up or anything but wayne johnson and jackson have been alternating the last few games uh, the last game that Georgia played that we televised, Tim, at the first half, Jackson had a rough first half, and Wayne Johnson came in to lead the Bulldogs back to defeat Kentucky. Jackson seems okay, but Johnson's in there currently. From what I've seen, Bob, Wayne Johnson runs the option a little bit better. Maybe they're looking at doing some of that. Third down seven, Georgia, from the 31. Johnson keeps it. Look at that to the 48-yard line. Jarvis Williams makes the stop. 
And almost anybody who does not know this team as well as you do, Tim, would say Jackson goes out, Georgia can't run it with the quarterback. But you know better. No, and I think this was designed back inside. You see the block there by number 69, Mac Burles? I think that was a, was a kind of a roll draw, and uh, we've seen Johnson really scoop. Ran for two touchdowns against LSU, I believe. Had a touchdown against Kentucky last year. Three against Vanderbilt. Here's Osborne. Penalty marker down in the Georgia backfield. Osborne down at the 45 of Florida. Lewis Oliver with the stop, but a penalty marker is down. Looks like it'll go against Georgia. If it is, it'll be the first penalty of the day against the Bulldogs. <laughs> Jim Stevens had to block Ricky Mulberry. Now, Ricky looks like a, a, uh, that's like a tree running over a twig. And uh, the problem is that Ricky moves around a little bit. <laughs> Stand still, Ricky. Offense. Coach Avita stood still out of whack. Let's see it here. Stevens, of course, uh, honor student for Georgia, graduated after three years. Whoop. Get a little hook there. Grabbed him by the helmet. Didn't mean to do it, but they saw it. So Osborne would have had a couple of more yards to get the first down. At any rate, it was not a first down run. It's first and 20 now from the 38-yard line. Johnson, incomplete. The, the screen just never developed. Clifford Charlton stayed right there in the area. He was very Johnson close to Lars Tate, no matter whether it caught Tate. the ball or not. There's James Jackson. He is not hurt. They're just rotating to see how Johnson is. And Johnson, of course, <laughs> did a nice job on the run, but now has a second down 20. Charlton just a fine player, lots of experience. Boy, he can smell the cheese in the bait. He didn't go after that. He just stood right there with Lars Tate, played that screen very well. Second down 20 from the 38. Tate, penalty markers down in the Georgia backfield. Tate is down, not much. If any. I think Ellis may have left a little early to lead that sweep. 33, the freshman fullback. So now Georgia starting to have penalty marker problems. And that was classic Florida defense right there. You see the way they converged on the football at practice. When they're practicing, they, everyone has on the defensive football team has to touch the ball carrier before the play is over. And so they all... League of motion! Offense. Legal motion. Penalty Georgia, the they all hustle to the Florida. ball. Watch them move to the ball. Watch them converge. 45, Pat Moore. 40, Gerald Dickens. 96, Jeff Roth. Weston staying on his feet. Nice job there. Moore just looking for that hole. A lot of people around the football. That's what you want on defense. 7 Hampton, 37 Cleveland. The freshman in the backfield now for Georgia on third down 20. Johnson. A lot of time. Can't find Osborne, throws it out of bounds, incomplete. And Georgia will have to give up the football. Now, it's easy to second guess, but I'm going to anyway. Georgia was moving the ball very well with Jackson in there. It surprises me to see if that's happening. Vince Dooley and his coaches swap quarterbacks, even though they're used to seeing two at this team. And I think that's more it than anything else. I think that, uh, as you see Wayne Johnson talk to an assistant coach there, they just want to get if they get in a situation where Jackson is out of the game and he runs the ball so much Bob they don't want to bring a cold quarterback into the game in the fourth quarter Hester has the wind to his back if he can get it airborne and he does Jarvis Williams at the 21 Georgia great coverage they lead the conference in net punting and that's why 2.42 to go second quarter Georgia 10 Florida 3 be first down for the Gators BMW 3 Series, one of car and driver's 10 best, 10 years in a row. Just 10 more reasons to drive one.
that passengers for Air Foley can make their reservations for either Athens, Georgia, or Gainesville, Florida next week. Depending on a lot of things that would happen today, we'll, you can check your local listings as to which one of those games will have Auburn, Georgia, or Kentucky at Florida. First down, 10. Gators from their own 21, trailing 10-3. Bell, sprained wrist and all, is back in. And it is complete. He gets it to 36. Anthony Williams, who goes down to the 29-yard line. John Bradley made the tackle. Something Galen Hall said, Tim, is that he had hoped that Gale, that Kerwin Bell would be able to dump off the ball, hit the short passes to the tight ends, the backs, and remain patient in this ballgame. I think that's going to be an important thing for him to be able to do. Then those backs got to catch the ball and get upfield. Quit, quit running laterally. Go ahead and get 10 yards. Emmett Smith. Bounced it outside, first down, Gators. Check that, Wayne Williams bounced it outside. These two guys are, they look alike. Emmett Smith, the better runner, clearly. But Wayne Williams is the junior who wears number 23 from Titusville. Had a good run earlier when he came in for Emmett Smith to give him a little rest. One of the concerns of Galen, of course, is he's going to need Emmett Smith later. He does not want him to be burned out by then. First down, 10 from the 33 for the Gators. Bell. Nice catch, and that was Wayne Williams. Pass is complete to Williams. He started the first down. And Here comes Tardis and, Tardis and Lewis into the game, Bob. The, uh, the pass rushers for Georgia. On second down, and a long three. Bell with a deep drop over the middle. Complete. It's to the running back, Wayne Williams, again. First down inside Georgia territory at the 48-yard line. Bell likes the look of that. First down, Only 1.21 to go in the half. Georgia doesn't want to get into a man-to-man -man situation with these missiles on the outside that Florida has, Bob. They can really fly. Great pass rush by number 92, Tardis. Tardis simply outruns the blockers. I was talking to Bill Lewis about his sack ability. I says, what is it about him? He says, it's one thing. He just gets outside and gets on the quarterback. What you have to do, Bob, is head up field, get up field. And he gets out wide enough where oftentimes he gets the inside lane to open up for him, too. Those tackles are trying to fly out of there so fast. And Kerwin Bell is shaken up. 59 seconds to go in the half. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. express yourself can be frustrating. That's why Singular Wireless offers a range of airtime options. Choose two and create your own plan. Sign up now and get a deal on this internet-ready Nokia. Singular Wireless. What do you have to say? You're going to see number 92, Richard Tarditz, working against 73, David Williams from Florida. Okay, now right there, Tardis heading up field. What Williams has to do is get a deeper set. He extends right here. Tardis is around the corner and three on Bell. Second down, 25 from the 36. Georgia with a nickel back in there. It's Miles Smith, number two, extra defensive back. Tight end Odom goes in motion. Here comes Tardis. They go to Smith. Nice job of running the ball short, a long way short of the first down, but back up toward midfield as the clock continues to tick. It's at 44, 45, 43 and counting. And it'll now be third down, and let's call it 13. Timeout, Florida. Time remaining in the first half. Florida trailing 10-3. One of those classic ball games, one play here and you've got a tie right in your hands, or another play and you've got a big lead by Georgia. Boston College apparently developing some confidence after beating Tennessee last week. 
What you might see from Florida as we look at these scores, Bob, is them keeping in a back because Tarditz is providing a, a problem for the the uh, offensive line. And of course, it's good. being an offensive line is kind of like being a defensive back. When do we talk about David Williams? Not on the good blocks that he's had all afternoon, but he gets beat on uh, on pass protection. But you have to realize if you got a situation and then help him out. Either turn out another lineman or keep a back in to, to, to give Tardis a shot on the outside just to slow him down a little bit and then check down into the pattern. But help him out because both Tardis and Morris Lewis have great speed. As you look at Paul Giles, who's got muscles. One way to do that, to help out the player on that side, is to toss the, the release pass to Emmett Smith, the back over in his area, as Florida just did. Third and 13 from the 49. Good time for Bell this time. It is complete. Short of the first down is Anthony Williams and out of bounds at the 41 yard line. 35 seconds remaining in the half. So the quarterback sack and the loss of 15 by Tarditz effectively nullified that drive for Florida unless they decide to try to go for it on fourth down with only 35 seconds to go in the half. It's an awfully stiff win. The probability of them being able to kick a field goal with that, but the velocity of this win is limited. They feel like they've better, got a better chance of getting three yards than they do of, of getting the field goal, and Galen starts to bite those fingernails. Fourth down three. Everybody in the stands looking for Emmett Smith, but Bell's going to throw it. No, he's not going to throw it. He has swamped. First man there, 54, Vince Guthrie, and a loss of 10. And these Bulldogs are teeing off on Kerwin Bell. Three sacks in the first half. Well, that time, Guthrie beat Anthony Williams, and probably the best pass protector they have in the, in the backfield is Willie McGrady. They got Williams in there because he can catch the ball. He sets up, doesn't get a hat, doesn't even get a hat on Guthrie as Guthrie knocks Bell to the turf. You just got to square him up and stick that face mask in his chest, slow him down a little bit. Johnson down at the 49-yard line of Florida. We have 22 seconds remaining in the half. Georgia has two timeouts remaining, so they've got some time. Now they'll have one as they use this one. Georgia. And I think we should point out, after we showed the replay, that uh, Tarditz beat David Williams on the next play. David Williams buried Richard Tarditz, uh, ended up laying on top of him, so Tarditz not a factor at that play. That battle will continue in the second half as the battle of the minds continue on the sideline. Vince, Bell. Dooley, Vince Dooley, excuse me, talking to George Hafner upstairs. Now watch David Williams. Crosses out. Tardis trying to reach back inside. Williams in good position. Provides protection there. The play before that, he had actually had Tardis on the ground. It's going to be a good battle all day long, on, all afternoon long on that side as you look at John Rambo, Brantley. Brantley's the type of guy, that, in Bill Lewis's words, uh, if you go down on the waterfront, you want to have John Brantley with you. Second down nine from the 49. 21 seconds to go in the half. Bulldogs lead 10-3. Now Johnson steps into the pocket beautifully. Rifle arm picked off. That's Lewis Oliver. to the 38 with nine seconds remaining in the half. And Florida's got another shot at putting some points up here. A 41-yard return, and Johnson had to make the stop. Lewis Oliver with 16 passes bro broken up on the season, Bob. Four interceptions, that's number five. up a little bit. Uralian frees him up in his in his deep third position to sometimes jump on that Third angle, down, and that's what he Gators. did there. Florida's got one play to try to get in field goal range here. They have one timeout left if he throws the ball quickly and doesn't use all nine seconds. Bell downfield with it. Caught incomplete. Odom dropped it. It was knocked loose oh, by the incomplete. tough defensive play by Georgia. Miles Smith. 
And Vincent, three seconds remaining. Miles Smith knocked the ball loose. The extra defensive back there for Georgia number two. So three seconds left, and Bell has one more chance to throw. Fine job by the nickelback. Miles Smith has seen some intermittent playing time at free safety, but Walter Odom had that football, and uh, he certainly jarred it loose. That was a big, big play for him because they were down on the 25-yard line well within field goal range. Now they'll either have to get it all via the touchdown pass or not have the opportunity to score. Well, almost picked off by Ben Smith at the 15. That'll end the half. Georgia 10, Florida 3. The NCAA thanks its corporate partners who dedicate financial resources, talent, and expertise to help emphasize the vital role intercollegiate athletics plays in society and in the overall development of student athletes. The support of higher education by these outstanding corporate citizens also provides funding for NCAA youth programs and NCAA championships. The NCAA and its corporate partners together building a better experience for our student athletes. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. My credit card debt was outrageous. Then I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and got my payments almost cut in half. Ameridad is a nonprofit organization that offers consultations to consumers seeking to eliminate debt. Every month, I pay our credit card bills, but the balances never seem to get smaller. Ameridad got our interest rates reduced, and now the balances are dropping dramatically. Call 800-535-6256. the half Georgia leads by a score of to three Florida had won the toss at the beginning of the game like to defer their choice to the second half and they will receive the football and have this brisk wind about 20 miles an hour and even stronger at times to their back and the wind has played some factor in this game Wayne Johnson came in for James Jackson for Georgia both quarterbacks played in the first half Johnson did not complete a pass only one. Johnson ran relatively well, as did Jackson. What kind of decision do the coaches have there in terms of thinking of Jackson or Johnson to start this second half? I think you can pretty much flip a coin. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back to Jackson. Good athletic skills and ability. I think James Jackson had opportunities to make some big runs in the first half, and his feet almost got ahead of him. He was seemed like he was trying to get there before uh, his body was trying to get there before his feet were ready to take him. Simmons and Watkins are deep. Watkins number four, Stacy Simmons number 25 for Florida. Casey kicking off into the wind, low. That was a smart idea, used his two iron. Here comes Watkins. Out to the 30, not bad field position for the Gators, trailing 10-3. First half statistics, 17 minutes, Georgia controlled the ball. And Florida 12, 55. Look at yards rushing for Florida, 16. Now that's minus 34 sacks, so they have about 50 yards rushing, but only rushed the ball 10 times for 4.7 yard average. Georgia's statistic in passing, though, is what you can expect to see in the second half if their ground game continues to roll. First down 10 from the 29-yard line. Kerwin Bell has a sore right wrist that he banged up in the first half. He gives to Emmett Smith. Smith out to the 33-yard line, gain of two or three. Emmett Smith in the first half had 34 yards. This is his 10th carry of the game. To develop a running scheme of things, Bob, it's, it's a running mentality. It's a lineman mentality as you look at what the wind's doing to the flag. You've got to be patient. Flora has not been used to this. They've been used to grinding up, eating up more yardage in a hurry. Second down, 732. Wind to the game. About 20 miles an hour. I don't believe there was John Bentley making the play for Gators. My family doctor said I need to call ball bladder surgery. But the insurance company wouldn't pay for it. They made me change to a different medication, and it doesn't work as well. They told me it was covered, but now they say it isn't. I can't afford to pay for it. They said it had to be set by my doctor back in Georgia. How can I drive with a broken arm? 
The people caught in the HMO crisis. Look familiar? If there was one product or service whose praises I would sing at Blue Cross Blue Shield, it's been a lifesaver for me. I never would have thought I would have been I would have thought that I would never um, do a commercial, but if by someone my age being in a health insurance commercial made one young person say, you know what, I probably need to have that, that would be a nice thing. I would say not only get health insurance, but be sure it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. First down from the 42. Mills in motion again. Smith. They run it to the right side. They just run the same play to the left side. About five for Emmett Smith. Terry Webster tripped him up. They like to get, because of Smith's great vision, good balance, and cutback ability, they like to get him the ball often deep in the backfield, seven or eight yards, so he can make some reads on the blocks. And you saw there that he did get uh, about six yards, limping a bit as he goes onto the far sideline. We'll check on Emmett Smith. As a matter of fact, he went to his knees as he got there. We'll keep a close eye on that. Second down, five Florida. Emmett Smith limped off the field. They hand it to the fullback. Close to the first down, depending on where they say he stopped, was Anthony Williams. Smith made a tackle. And second effort by Anthony Williams, number 36, gone for the game. Anthony leads a back a receiver that is the running back. The running of the back of the future of fullback. Going to be the young Billy McGrady looking at Emmett Smith on the sideline now. He's behind the man in the blue shirt. First down in Florida from the 47th of Georgia. Trailing 10-3. Emmett Smith shaken up and on the sideline. Hit in the backfield by John Brantley. Fifth tackle of the day. Loss of about a yard play. Let's watch John Brant here who has developed by line linebacker. Yes, the base sees the guard pulling the away. Runs through and Stop. The guard expecting Brantley to pursue laterally down the line. Pick a mole. He outfoxed him. Rambo outfoxed him. Snuck in from the back and made the hit. Six running plays for Florida. Pick it down to 11. The eight yard line of Georgia. Bell's going to throw this time. Over to the left side. That's Sneed. Gets about eight yards inside the 40 yard line. Will Jones with the stop. Give him a game nine. There's Smith. You see what he's got, the ice inside his right calf. Maybe a little bone bruise type action there. Could have been kicked in the shin. That's awfully, awfully painful. And what they're trying to do now is just numb it. Third down one from the 39. Opening moments of the second half from the Gator Bowl. Gators trail, 10-3. Here's the backup. Tailback Wayne Williams getting the first down. Williams, the junior. Aaron Chubb made the stop. Williams now has 19 yards and three carries. McGrady into the football game for Florida. And when we've seen Florida at their best this year, Bob, against Alabama in the first half of LSU, this is the type of look they gave you. They mixed in the pass, but actually they lived on the run. First down, 10 from the 36. 11-14 to go third quarter. Williams, nice job of running to the 31-yard line. Got himself about five, a little more. Larry Brown, the right defensive guard for Georgia, senior from Decatur with the tackle for the Bulldogs. Brown and Lewis, young Bill Lewis there, the defensive coordinator for Georgia. He was in the Tiger Park when he got out of school. He was a defensive back, and he was a shortstop pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. Fine athlete, good teacher. Second down five from the 31-yard line. Florida driving. Opening drive of the second half. On the delay. Wayne Williams is hit by Larry Brown. Needs to go to the 26 for the first down. They'll spot it just inside the 30-yard line. was for clear blue skies and about 75. I don't think it's been that warm yet today and the clouds have rolled in, but it's still a very pleasant
an afternoon for football. House of 82,000 at the goal. Third down, about four. Bell. It's picked off. The second interception of the afternoon for Ben Smith, and it was a nice interception. Bell had thrown it low looking for Willard, and Smith just dived in and made a very athletic play. You're going to see Smith. He came all the way across with Willard right on him in good position to make a break on the ball. The ball just a tad underthrown, but Ben Smith had him covered all the way. Kerwin should have pulled, probably pulled that one down and trying to see what he can get. Good job of coverage by Ben Smith. And the answer to the quarterback question for Georgia, it's going to be James Jackson opening the second half. 9.46 to go, third quarter. Welcome to the 7-Up Blind Taste Test. Go ahead, try another one. This is rancid milk, man. What is that, dishwater? Yes, it is. Next. Not as refreshing as 7-Up, is it? One left, more right. You're sick, man. Fresh squeezed this morning. See? 7-Up tastes better. Ah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Next! Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money. My credit card was outrageous. I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and gave my payments almost cut in half. Ameridad is a non-profit organization that offers free consultations. Without this, they seem to Possession of the football. Bulldogs. On the Ben Smith interception, it's going to be. Mars Tate. There's that Georgia running game. Tate gets. It'll be real close to a first. With the tackle. See number 68, Steve out. Good hook block by Mo. Zalowski doing a nice job on the line back. There's Alfon. Again, getting the crack for deep. Second down, less than a yard from the 32. A free play for the Bulldogs here. Alfonso Ellis gets the first down. That's about all. He was tripped up by 99, Alfonso Henry Brown. Ellis. The 35 yard line. Oliver, Steve again, looks on. One of the things that George is doing on offense, they're First splitting those two wide ball. receivers extremely ball. wide. Out there with them goes Jarvis Williams. Lewis Oliver has to get get width toward those two wide receivers, and you're taking two of the top tacklers on Florida's defense actually out of the action back to the tight end side. First and ten from the 34. Georgia leading 10-3. Jackson fakes and throws. Diving catch by Kirk Warner. Georgia with two excellent tight ends in 87 Sadowski and 83 Kirk Warner, the sophomore from Cochran. It's his only a sixth catch of the year, but he has two touchdown catches. Florida linebackers becoming very, very run conscious. Good fake by Jackson. Warner gets lost in the wash and comes clear. If he would have been able to catch that ball and maintain his footing, he was going a long way. 49-yard line of the Bulldogs now. They started at their own 22. There's Warner in motion. Now he sets on the line on the... Lars Tate. Nice. Pursuit by the Gator. Tate's going to lose a yard. Maybe get Lars back to the line of scrimmage. Carvis Williams the there. Williams was there. For the Gators. when you're going to be patient and it's aggravating three, four years, but you got to pay you're going to have chances this Ben Smith came up with a big play Georgia Gator defender got to come up with a big play for them sit down Down. They'll have to measure. 
you're going to have success against George's offense, you have to limit James Jackson's lateral movement. There's got to be somebody in his face right away, or else this happens. A good job of blocking on Henry Brown. Left the perimeter unprotected. James Jackson, he's a fighter. He's a competitor. He struggles forward for the first down. Jackson with 35 yards and seven carries. That was a first down at the 41 of Florida. Hampton. To the 34, and Georgia's got a lot of bullets in their gun. Tate, Hampton, Jackson, Ellis, you name it. We're going to Atlanta for this football update. Georgia has a lot of bullets in this offense. So does Michigan State. The route is on. Quarterback Bobby McAllister to Andre Rison. We saw a touchdown earlier between those two. Here is another one. It's 28-3, and it's only in the second quarter. Back to Bob and Tim. McAllister and Rison, what a connection there for the Michigan State Spartans. The block of the fullback is just is just it's the contained man usual. A strong linebacker, or it's a double team block on, on a trap block, but it's the critical block. And Alfonso Ellis has doing, been doing an excellent job all year long for Georgia, as Willie McGrady has been doing for Florida. Remember Todd Gatlin, a linebacker from Florida, is out for the season with a broken arm. Jeff Ruder was playing at the outside for the game with a knee. They're very thin at the linebacking and, as a matter of fact, throughout the Florida defense. They've been out there a long time today. The first down to the 25. Loose ball. They say it came loose after the whistle sounded. It'll be spotted at the 25. Let's watch it again, though. Once again, the Florida defender on the ground at the point of attack. Great block. Is that Cleveland? Jackson fighting to get free. Looked like that ball popped out of there before he hit the ground, but uh, it's a very close call. Better angle this time. See it again. Jackson struggling and fighting, and it's gone. Yeah, awfully difficult to see. Georgia did recover it anyway. Burroughs had fallen on it. Second down, four from the 25. Hampton inside the 20. First down, Bulldogs. A classic Georgia ball control. Run the clock tailback oriented drive and I personally don't like the, the blitz that much against the eye formation I think most defensive coordinators will agree that you want you want uh, defense in depth you don't want to just give up one tremendous effort and let that front wall go because if the tailback breaks into the clear then he's gone ten plays on this drive nine have been on the ground on the first down this is the 10th on the ground, and Tate goes down at about the 18-yard line. He's tackled by 40, Gerald Dickens. And what happens between the 20s doesn't really make any difference. Now you're getting into where the big boys play, inside the 20-yard line. And if you're going to have an effective defense, as Florida has had all season long, here's where they had to make the plays. Here's where they have to make the stand. Galen's been in these situations many times. As a quarterback at Penn State, as a coach at Oklahoma, He's a very successful coach here at Florida. Second down eight. From the 18, Osborne in motion. Get it. The running back who gets it to the 15-yard line. It's Alfonso Ellis, the fullback. To the 14-yard line. Weston with the stop. Weston so I have a moment. I want to congratulate Florida. one of our fine TBS crew members, Don Bohannon, who was married recently. It's uh, so much happier and easier to work with now. And we thank Barbara Four. for that. And also... Uh, I'd like to give our best wishes to uh, Nikki O'Donnell, who is uh, in the hospital back in Highland Park, Illinois. Fan of college football. And I hope you get better soon, Nikki. Third and four from the 14. Georgia on the drive. They started at their own 22. Jackson gets to Hampton. Penalty markers down. Hampton down at the 11. On the third and four, Hampton was close to the first down. Markers are in the Georgia backfield, and I think it's going to be against the Bulldogs. Oh, 
Uh, we'll have to see whether he got the first down or how close, and then that'll provide an, an option for Florida on making the decision on the penalty. So we'll just let him sort it out here with Rom Gilbert. Bowling, offense. They took the penalty and moved it back to the 24. Sadowski into the football game. Hampton into the football game. Let's see it here, right there. He's now third down. Where it is. In the blur, you see the hand reach out. Third and 14 out at the 24-yard line. Jackson. Goes down at the 20, short of the first down. Dives into the 19. It's going to be about a 36-yard field goal attempt into the win by Crumley. He had a 53-yarder, his career long, earlier in this ball game. Let's see. They've spotted it at the 20, so that'll make it about a 37-yard attempt into the wind at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. And now they have changed kickers, and they brought in the freshman John Casey. He's a left-footed soccer style, stronger leg, may have something to do with the win. It is good. What a great decision. John Casey, who was 0 for 1 on a very long field goal attempt earlier, now hits, and it is 13 to 3, Georgia. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. good as the original. I wish I lived in Wisconsin. But Diet Dr. Pepper is. It tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. Offensive coaches said, obviously, they're going to have to try to get better possession time than Georgia, try to run more plays if they are to have balance and an opportunity to win this ball game. It's been Georgia substantially, but interestingly enough, even though Georgia, in my opinion, has dominated this ball game, it's still only 13 to 3. And Emmett Smith, who has a bruise on the right calf, is back in the ball game and carrying the ball. Hit at the line of scrimmage by Jim Hickey, number 90. A good job of staying at home by Jim Hickey. Emmett Smith made a lot of yardage, cutting it back, trying to find the seam to the weak side. See, Brantley gets ahead of the football. He can't get back there, and Jim Hickey coming right down the line. Georgia wow. so far successful in cutting off the cutback run by Emmett Smith. It's Florida's ball, Bobble on the snap, and Tracy Daniels and Herman Bell. Simply a lost play and a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be third down long, and look out. Will the Bulldogs come? They may decide to cover here since it's deep in Florida territory. Miles Smith into the game, fifth defensive back. A time remaining, 115-14 and counting, is in the third quarter, with Georgia leading by 10. to Smith, short of the first down, out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Mike Brown with the stop. And Georgia leading by 10. We'll get the ball back again. It's an excellent defensive play by Hickey on the first down, a bobbled snap on the second down, then on third and long, 
Bell had to simply find his back, Emmett Smith. Andrew Hunt, Nate Lewis, gonna field it, bump it, bounce right into his midsection. Good job of running it back out from 35. 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Georgia 13, Florida 3. BMW 3 Series, one of car and driver's 10 best, 10 years in a row. Just 10 more reasons to drive one. My daughter Erin is away from home in college. I can rest assured, at any time she needs medical attention, she's got a Blue Cross card and she's gonna be taken care of. Here's my little girl, got on her little cheerleading outfit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> With her Blue Cross card, she hasn't had any problem at all. With Blue Cross Blue Shield, there is a feeling of assurance that you're gonna you're gonna be taken care of, so you don't worry about it. Exactly. Forty seconds to go in the third quarter. Georgia leading 13-3 in possession of the ball at the Bulldogs' 34-yard line. Jackson continues at quarterback. Here he comes on the reverse. He just faked it and kept it. First down, Bulldogs. Put it into the belly of the fullback, pulled it out, and just rolled to his left. Great acceleration, 14 yards. Well, this could be something that James Jackson does on his own or that's called from the sideline, and only he knows he's going to keep it. But James Jackson can, can make the big plays that really make this Georgia offense truck downfield. He is the counterpunch. 217 yards of total offense for Georgia. 201 on the ground. Here's Hampton on the ground. To the 50, a gain of about two. A 60 of those yards rushing came from James Jackson. Tate has 50. Hampton 51. Balance. Georgia has three players who can get you 100 yards in a heartbeat. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Slip and strip. Strip and slip. That's what happens when your tools won't fit. Then you need the Gator Grip, the revolutionary socket that grabs on tight to virtually anything. Watch, no matter what size fastener, nut, bolt, wing nut, square nut, eye bolt, hook, most anything, Gator Grip holds on tight to finish the job. Now hang a plant, work under the hood, or set up a Christmas tree stand quickly and easily. The secret are these retractable steel rods that form to fit most any size or shape, standard or metric. Even stripped and damaged bolts are no problem. You get the Gator Grip with this heavy-duty ratcheting handle for only $19.95. Plus, we'll include this adapter for your power drills and drivers free. Gator Grip comes with a lifetime replacement warranty. If it ever fails, we'll replace it free for life. Order now. Call 800-535-6256 to receive your Gator Grip for just $19.95. This offer won't last, so call now or see us online at 800buyitnow.com. Exciting game there, and with 15 minutes left here, don't go away. 13 to 3, Georgia leading Florida. Georgia at the 50 with the ball on second down eight. Opening play of the fourth quarter. Hampton with a 41 of Florida. Jarvis Williams tripping him up. He's helped by Lewis Oliver. Ricky Mulberry shaken up and is out of the game right now defensively for Florida as you look at the third quarter statistics. Look at the rushing. 203 for Georgia, only 48 for Florida. And if I was going to have a low number in either passing or rushing, I'd rather have a low number in passing. That means I'm controlling the football on the, on the, on the ground and controlling the line of scrimmage. James Jackson. Coverage throws it incomplete, hard to handle, dropped by Troy Sadowski, 87. And for Florida, the an outstanding Sadowski. come from behind team in 1985 and 1986, not.
good at a comeback this year. They have not been able to successfully come back in any of the games. Well, Galen Hall led him to 17 and one record in his first two years. In uh, 1986, he ran into the toughest schedule in the nation this Second year. Down, in 87, the third the toughest 42. schedule in the nation, and he's got to look down the barrel of the gun week after week after week with a thin team. That's tough. Second down, 10 from the 41. <laughs> The center, Todd Wheeler, never gave That's Jackson it. the ball. And Jackson was backing out of there and says, what's missing? Nothing's here. I have my shoes. I have my helmet. I have my shoulder pads. That's I don't like, have a ball. It's like the old joke about which part of the body is most important. Red right? ball. You guys don't think I'm important? Legal you try to play without me. Georgia. I'm not playing this time. I'm Five staying here. To the you can't do that. That ball never moved. Exerting uh, some now. control, Todd 15. Wheeler. <laughs> Makes this little statement there. Todd, by the way, playing after having arthroscopic surgery on his knee immediately following the Kentucky game. They had the week off, but he had arthroscopic surgery two weeks ago. Not quite two weeks ago, but 12 days ago. Ricky Mulberry's being treated with smelling salts. He was hit in the back of the head. I'm not chuckling because he's hurting, but... Osborne breaking the tackle, getting it to the 37, 38 yard line. It was second and 15, gain of 10. Let's look at this formation, and George has been running out of this formation. You see, the second Florida man in is number 26, Jarvis Williams. You can't see his number, but that's who he is. The top of the head at the bottom right of your screen is Lewis Oliver. They're the two best tacklers on the Florida team. Here they throw the quick screen just to keep him alert. Watkins misses the tackle. Good job of running by. Cassius Osborne Third but down. when they run the ball back Six. to the tight end side they're taking out two of the best Florida players big defensive play for the Gators here third down six from the Florida 38 Jackson looks like he wants to throw it this time and does incomplete wanted to get it to 83 Kirk Warner it is incomplete and Georgia will have to give up the football it'll be fourth down six Actually, I think what George Hafter, the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, was trying to do was sneak Rodney Hampton up the sideline, ran that little out-and-up pattern, tried to get the defensive back to jump on the curl by the tight end, but it was well played by Florida. Now, the biggest play of the first half may very well have been David Duke's punt that went out of bounds at the two-yard line. He's in to try to do that again, and he's in that pooch kick area of the field. Jarvis Williams will stand back there about the 10. Dukes is excellent at getting this ball out of bounds inside the 20. Let's watch it. Not this time. It's a touchback. It'll come out to the 20. Nate Lewis almost got there for Georgia. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Imagine if you could reduce the interest rate on your credit cards by half or more. Interest on our credit cards used to be 21 to 23 percent. Now they're down to 8 percent or less. Get out of debt in three to five years. Before Cambridge, it would have taken me 10 years to get out of debt. With Cambridge, I'll be debt free in two to three years. Reduce your monthly payments by one third or more. I was paying $1,000 a month on my bills. Now it's down to 460. And even get cash back. We've gotten three checks so far. One for 230, one for 135, and this last one for $150, just for paying on time every month. Cambridge Credit Counseling is a nonprofit service. They'll work with you and your creditors to reduce your monthly payments. It's not like bankruptcy which hurts your credit. Cambridge is a solution we were praying for. A phone call, a couple faxes, and I was done. Give Cambridge Credit Counseling a call. Find out how good it feels to be debt free. Oh, that's a beauty. I'm sure Florida feels like they've got about a mile to go and that the toll is heavy here. Florida first and 10 from their own 20, trailing 13-3, 13-27 remaining in this ball game. It's complete. Bell gets rid of it for the first down to Clifton Reynolds, and it's fumbled Georgia ball. Terry Webster fell on it, and Kerwin Bell has got to be saying, oh my, what can I do? The tight end has really become a receiver for Florida this year and 25 catches. Did you see that one being pulled down? Rusty Beasley popped him. I think the ball was out already. It looked like Brantley torn it loose. You don't see it on the screen, but Bell is on his knees after getting, getting knocked off his feet, pounding the turf in frustration. Three quarterback sacks, two interceptions, one fumble recovery. 
This Georgia Bulldog defense is here in force today. From the 35 of Florida, now they can run it again. Tate, only a couple yards though. Florida defenders are there, led by Jarvis Williams. Ten tackles today for Jarvis Williams. Tennessee struggling with Louisville. Tennessee was favored by about 70. Not quite. Vanderbilt leading Kentucky early. People think the from McPherson, that quarterback from Syracuse, saw the shot up there, maybe the highest draft choice of a quarterback. Most pro scouts I talk to say they think Irwin eight. Bell will go in the first round despite his disappointing year. Second down eight from the 33, Georgia. Leading 13-3, following Florida's third turnover. Alfonso, Alfonso Ellis Alfonso tripped Ellis. up at the line of scrimmage. Gain of a couple. Georgia in field goal range. Murray made the tackle at the 31. Ben Stooley, a conservative football coach, and you can be conservative when you've got good players. He's not a risk taker. Tried to air it out a little bit the last couple of years, but uh, I think he's taking the air out of those balloons now, and he's coming back to the ground. He's not looking for any great quarterbacks. He wants somebody that can lug it and eat up the clock. Third down six from the 31. Jackson. Charlton stayed there, and Jackson threw it to Sadowski. Stopped at the 20-yard line for the first down. Lewis Oliver with the tackle. Jackson fake started to run. Charlton stayed home. Jackson knew that if he stayed home, he probably had his tight end open and got him with the ball. Exactly, Bob. It's a win-win situation. Henry Brown here dragging inside. Charlton staying home. A linebacker, though, in the middle missed the coverage on Sadowski, got caught up in the run fake. And look at this tackle by Lewis Oliver. Fine job of getting Sadowski to the ground. Spotting it at the 19, first down 10, Georgia, leading 13-3. 11.38 to go in the game. Tate right up the middle. Inside the 15 to the 13. And now the, the ground forces of uh, Vince, just call me George Patton Dooley, starting to really eat at Florida. Mark Murray in there, a redshirt freshman. Dickens playing on an injured ankle. Just really thin in the interior. As I talked to Jim Dickey, inside linebacker coach, uh, concerned about his kid's ability to go all four quarters. Second down. And he sent Tate at him again. Nice hole. Close to the first down. It is a first down. First and goal, Georgia, from the eight. Williams and Jones combining on the stop. Let's look at this Georgia offensive line. Stevens pulling out of there. Look at 63, Todd Wheeler scrambling. And that's just kind of the attitude that everybody's playing with. They've got Florida players on the ground. Good hustle. Okay, come on now, Florida defense. Here's where you got to go. Here's where you got to come up. Fight back. Eight-yard line. Fun to play down here. They can't really outfancy you down here. First down goal. Georgia jumped on the left side. That could make it tougher touchdown wise and make it first and goal if in fact they take the five and I'm sure they will first and goal of 13. Often one of the hardest things for a linebacker to do ball, ball, ball start, offense. is to protect their legs. They have if you come out and take a guy on the, in the chest area they're real strong and stiff but they have they have some of them have a hard time of dropping down and actually keeping a fellow like Alfonso Ellis off their legs. Galen Hall hoping for a big play from his defense. Georgia with 228 yards rushing against Florida's 48 today. Double tight ends on first and goal from 13 Tate. Out of bounds at the four, three and a half yard line. A gain of nine. Great individual effort by Tate. He reminded me of Dave Hampton. A former pro running back who shows him a leg and then takes it away. This is as nifty as I've ever seen Tate look. Look at that. Jarvis Williams, very, very quick defensive back. He runs right around him. Watkins comes up. Not a real good effort from Kerry Watkins, but a fine job of running by Lars Tate. And they were in that option set in the backfield. Second down goal from the four. Jackson faked it I think faked it <laughs> at any rate he kept it I do know for sure he kept it and they stopped it about three <laughs> <laughs> faked me out might have faked out Tate 
and Vince. Remaining calm. Ray Goff is standing next to him on his right. Ray Goff is the SEC Player of the Year in 1976. He's a running back coach. Galen Hall got, has to be concerned about his defense here. Third down goal at the two. Big defensive stand for the Gators here. They keep dodging the bullet. Let's see if Georgia's ground game can punch it in. Tate does not get there. It'll be fourth and goal from the one. It is 13 to 3, Georgia. Fans are calling for it. Dooley's calling for timeout. It'll be fourth and goal from the one. With the score 13 to 3, if Georgia tries to go for it, it could give a big momentum boost opportunity to Florida. We'll see. Having just one way to express yourself can be frustrating. That's why Singular Wireless offers a range of airtime options. Choose two and create your own plan. Sign up now and get a deal on this internet-ready Nokia. Singular Wireless. What do you have to say? Blue Cross Blue Shield is ahead of most companies in trying to help the physicians provide better care. Patients can't remember which tests were done, through the Unfold Solutions program, that information is available online. So that means that I can make a better decision as far as the quality of care that I can give that patient. Blue Cross Blue Shield, they're being good citizens to, uh, to meet the needs of the patients and the industry. When they see the need, they, they respond. Nine ten to go in the game. Georgia leading by 10. Dooley has decided to go for it on fourth down. The way their defense is playing, I don't think you can go wrong, even if they stop them, Bob. The defense came to life last week against Kentucky in the second half, allowed them 27 yards. They played extremely well here this afternoon. Ellison Tate in the backfield, double tight ends. Nate Lewis will line up back there, too. James Jackson trying to call two timeouts. His line's back up again, and... Dooley's wondering what's happening down there, too. He cannot call two timeouts. If you do that, it's a penalty. Now, the official will... He requested two timeouts. That's what the call is. Could be a penalty against Georgia. Now, I think he was having trouble with the crowd noise. Yeah, and he can ask for a timeout there. But you can't call timeout. You look at the official. They said they did not give the judgment to Georgia. They do call the penalty against the Bulldogs. There seemed to be some confusion in the backfield. Nate Lewis seemed unsure. Go, folks! Delay a game. Offense. One team can't take two timeouts during the same dead ball period. There you go. But uh, there, you can't ask for a timeout if, if you're the quarterback, if you have a crowd noise problem. But then it's up to the official to decide whether there's enough crowd noise to assign it. If you don't, you get the penalty. And that's what happened. And they're going to now go, because of the penalty, for the field goal with Steve Crumlin. Big play in that regard from Florida's point of view. Crumley hits the field goal, and it is 16-3, to Georgia, with 9.07 to go in the ballgame. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. I'm a cat pollen dust mite. And Billy's a mold ragweed cat. I'm three. I learned so much more about my kids' allergies after I called Zyrtec. They sent me an information package about how Zyrtec treats indoor and outdoor allergies. It also came with a $10 rebate offer on a Zyrtec prescription. And this, now they can go and play outside. Most people with allergies have indoor allergies like mold and dust and outdoor allergies like trees and grass. Among leading prescription antihistamines, only Zyrtec is FDA approved to treat both indoor and outdoor allergies. And Zyrtec's approved for kids as young as two years. Talk to your child's doctor about Zyrtec and call 888-622-5878 for your information package, $10 rebate offer, plus a free gift. In studies, side effects included drowsiness, headache, sore throat, and stomach ache. Most were mild or moderate. Most children weren't bothered by them enough to stop taking Zyrtec. Zyrtec. That's Zyrtec. Lots of allergies. Just one Zyrtec. Starts with just one call. Following his potential heart problem, Vince Dooley has decided to remain calm and collected. 
This is on the field goal, which was good all the way. <laughs> Imagine if it had been close. <laughs> when behind the kickoff, it's bobbled in the end zone, and Florida steps out. What a mistake. Or maybe it's not going to be a mistake. That is Wayne Williams. And he's all the way to the 29, near the 30-yard line. Wayne Williams bobbled the ball in the end zone, Wayne decided Williams. to step out, Number then thought, uh-oh, I shouldn't. Now he says, I got to. And what happened is, as Number often happens, is the Georgia coverage breaks down by that time out of their lanes, and you do have an opportunity. Oops. Nope. Oops. You can't <laughs> kneel down on the one-yard line. We're out. Now you're in real life here. Now Wayne Williams is running from fear. He's not afraid of Georgia. He's afraid of the coaches when he gets to the sideline. <laughs> did a good job out near the 30-yard line. Oh, my. First down 10 from the 30. Last week, Watkins steps out. This time, almost a big problem for Williams. It is complete to Simmons. Going the wrong way. Get him a compass. You see what I'm talking about? I mean, that's... Got to drive you nuts. Catch the ball. Run up field. And Stacy, this Stacy's gotten into the habit of doing this. And it's... You know, this is a quick hitter. You make a move, now get upfield. Go, go. Not that way now. Come on, upfield. Maybe he was lost. Yeah. Reminds me trying to get to the stadium. You know, I get into that same problem, Tim. You're aware of that. Second down, 12. The 28, sense of direction. Here's Emmett Smith. Oh, the Bulldogs are there. The Junkyard Dogs. There are eight of them in the exclusive club, and the newest member made the tackle. 95, Bill Goldberg. You see the symbol of honor on his left shoulder. The assistant coaches vote on it. Then they take the nominee to Vince Dooley, and he approves them, and there are eight of them so far in that club. Third down, 11 from the 29. Bell. Running for his life. It's complete to Willie Sneed, and he gets the first down. Flag in the uh, backfield for Florida. 22-yard completion could be a call here against the Gators. It was back there where holding is often called, and Bell was standing back there a long time. Let's see. Ron Gilbert, the official. They're calling it back. against the Gators and the penalties continue to play Florida 735 to go in the game we move it all the way to the 19 yard line where it will be third down and forever call it 21 third and 21 you have to be you have to admire Galen Hall for the way he maintains his composure seems to be unflappable on the sidelines and you know his stomach would be eating up a lot of roll aids about this time Florida needs to move the ball out to the 40-yard line for the first down. Georgia rushes for penalty markers down. Flag on the play. Somebody may have moved on the left side. Could have been. Looked like uh, David Williams, 73, is pulling. They pulled early. Let's see. I think the running back, Bob, is the, the halfback went too early. Good ball, four. So another penalty, and they add up. That's the seventh penalty on the day. The 22, Emmett Smith. Williams steps early. Smith moves. Williams actually moved a split second early, but they both went in motion. That can happen if you're having a little bit of problem protecting the passer. You're having a little bit of problem getting back to try to get a jump on the snap count and the Kerwin holds it a little bit too long. Williams was thinking of uh, 92 Richard Cardis. It's third and 26. They're all over Bell. He gets out of it somehow. Almost intercepted. Incomplete. Bell just running for his life. Quarterback pressure came first from 57 Morris Lewis. 57 Morris Lewis, number 92 Richard Cardis, up and around the corner. By the time Cardiff got there, he was already flushed out by Lewis. A couple of fine pass rushes for Georgia. Andrew running into the wind. It's a line drive off. 
drives Bowen back to his 44. He's got some time to return, though. Inside Florida territory to the 44-yard line. On the return, he was tripped up by 42, James Massey. 7-12 to go in the game. Georgia, 16-3. Mr. Fred, they just built this bench not too long ago, and it's already rotten. There's got to be better material. Well, Dad, burn it, Jimmy. Is that any way to treat it? Treat it? Yeah! Osmo's Pressure Treated Pine from Great Southern Wood has a lifetime warranty against rotting decay. So remember, if it doesn't say Osmo's on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Dad, burn it, Jimmy. You get no. Jacksonville, Florida, Georgia, first and 10, 45 of Florida, leading 16-3, Hampton near the 40. I'd like to thank our booth crew doing their usual fine job, Tim Anderson spotting Alex Regera on the statistics, and their booth manager, Nikki Nichols. Burnett made the tackle for the Gators. Jeff Benke, our information coordinator for the graphics that you read on the screen his last game of the year because he gets transferred into the NBA we'll miss you Jeff but not that much because I'll be seeing you in the NBA anyway James Jackson on the fake and the keep Jackson to the 29 yard line Jarvis Williams with his 12 tackle of the day Jackson has run for 71 yards only passed for 47 but I'll tell you what, as good as these Georgia tailbacks have been, my view out of the backfield, at least, Tim, is Jackson has been the key guy there. Well, he's a key guy but because what he is is a great counter to what they do. You've always got to be concerned. You've got to wait before you get into your pursuit to make sure he doesn't have the ball, and he's a threat on the corner because of the great job of blocking by Alfonso Ellis. Tate has 73 yards rushing, as does Jackson. Hampton, 65. With Alfonso Ellis to the 24. Georgia chewing up clock now. Florida has three timeouts left. Georgia two. It's 16 to three. With 5:53 remaining. A lot of big, big, big football games this weekend around the nation. We'll keep you posted on the scores right here. And of course, have highlights and scores immediately following the game. Craig Sager in our studios. Second down, five from the 24. Hampton bounces outside. First down to the 15-yard line. Oliver with his fourth stop of the day. And now Hampton has 74. Talk about balance. Hampton, 74 yards. Tate, 73. Jackson, 73. Now Florida defenders trying to really play outside their limits. That time Jarvis Williams trying to really squeeze it down. The running back Hampton popped outside and a fine job of Lewis Oliver chasing him down. Georgia still very much in the hunt for the SEC championship. Hampton. Down to the 12, tackled by Henry Brown. Hampton again carries for the Bulldogs. Auburn playing Florida State today. Of course, a non-conference game. Even if Auburn loses, they'll their SEC record will remain at 3-0-1. LSU playing Alabama tonight. They're undefeated at 4-0. LSU has their fate in their own hands. Georgia at 3-1. Alabama at 3-1. Florida will be eliminated now. They were technically still in it coming in here at 2-2. Tennessee 1-1-1, still hanging in there. Yeah, and let's get this play in and I got something to say. I can't wait. Second and six from the 12. Hampton to about the eight. Tim, I can't wait. What is it? Well, I was talking to Bill Arnsparger before the game, who's now the athletic director here in Florida. But uh, there's a question about whether Hodson's going to be able to play for LSU, I guess, huh? Absolutely. Questionable if due to an injury. And Gidry's a good quarterback, but I don't think he's a 60-minute quarterback, especially when you talk about that combination, Wendell Davis. So... Uh, 
Certainly don't count Alabama out in terms of uh, defeating LSU in this race and keeping it tight. Well, Georgia has a chance, of course, to get right directly at Auburn next week. But LSU plays Alabama, and tonight, of course, that'll have a lot to say. An Alabama upset there would really throw this thing open. But of course, Alabama's right in the middle of it still. First down, Lars Tate. It'll be first down goal from inside the five with 3.38 to go. And once again, it's pretty apparent, <laughs> looking at the crowd here, that Vince Dooley has dodged the double loss bullet again. Never have the Gators defeated a Vince Dooley Georgia team two times in a row. Florida won last year 31 19. It's not going to happen this year. 16 3 Georgia threatening to score again and put the old nail in the coffin. Tate. He did not get in. Right to the edge of the goal line, but not in. He was stopped by Clifford Charlton. Straight toss. Stevens pulling out. Brian Cleveland getting a block. Charlton hangs on to Tate. Good hustle by Odom. Jerry Odom keeping him out of the end zone. Get another chance to line up. Another chance to make something happen. Another chance to tear the ball loose. Second down. Lars <laughs> Tate has had a tremendous year talking about the Heisman Trophy candidate beginning of the season and the emergence of Rodney Hampton. You have to respect Lars Tate as you see him going over the top here for his attitude about the playing time of Rodney Hampton. As Hampton emerges emerges as a player, his chances for the Heisman disappear. But Tate being a good team man, just uh, took it in stride and has continued to produce. Casey with the point after. 23-3, Georgia, 2.38 remaining in the game. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. How much would you pay for these leather-bound classics? driver's 10 best 10 years in a row just 10 more reasons to drive one if these georgia backs like tate and hampton and jackson buy stakes for a good play by the offensive line and by fullbacks they're going to be shelling out a lot of meal money for stakes <laughs> that offensive line and the georgia fullbacks have done a whale of a job today Williams fumbled it again. It bounced up in his arms. Williams finds the crack. Ben Smith has an angle and the superior speed and runs him down at the 25. Well, maybe that's a designed play by Wayne Williams. You bobble the kickoff. Look confused and then get the yardage. 70 yards on this. We talked about that before, Bob. You see that ball hit the ground. Oftentimes they relax for a step. Wayne Williams again, very patient, letting the blocking develop. And here he goes. Ben Smith catching up to him here as rigor mortis set in. And Wayne Williams, your legs get a little heavy at that point. 23-3, Georgia. Too little, too late for Florida. Bell hit from behind. Richard Tarditz. He's credited. He's been in on three sacks today. He gets credit for two and a half. I can't believe there wasn't offsides on that. Let's watch this from the snap, if we can see it. Oh, you're going to see. Okay, we're going to see Richard Tarditz. But uh, 
he was offside. He left too early. I don't know if we have it from the snap, but uh, he beat the ball. Second down, 16, Bell. It's complete to Sneed. He goes out of bounds inside the 20, but he, his acceleration, Tardis, acceleration is so fast. I did some research here, Tim. <laughs> he can actually do this. Let me get my pen. Tardis can do this. He can turn the light out in his room and get in bed before it gets dark. But that's, uh, using, that's that with French, French, uh, French light bulbs. So. <laughs> there he is now, Mr. Quicker Than Darkness. Third down three, Florida. Bell completes it to Simmons. He got it upfield this time. Nice move. Touchdown, Florida. Very good. A little too late, however. Right, but that's what we've been talking about uh, this afternoon. And obviously, uh, Mike Heimerdinger had a talk with Stacy Simmons and talked to Stacy about getting up the field. Makes the catch now. Now he starts heading toward the end zone. That's it. Pick your way through there. Some missed blocks by the Georgia players. Good job of running by Stacy Simmons. Good north-south run. And Kerwin Bell on that touchdown toss. Tied Reeves for the SEC most career touchdowns at 54. Beginning with the PAT, it's good. It's 23-10 Georgia, but from Florida's point of view, it's too little too late. A minute 41 remaining. Welcome to the 7-Up Blind Taste Test. Go ahead, try the other one. This is rancid milk, man. What is that, dishwater? Yes, it is. Next. Not as refreshing as 7-Up, is it? More left, more right. <laughs> You're sick, man. Fresh squeezed this morning. See? 7-Up tastes better. Ah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Next! Kerwin Bell, now with 7,312 yards, has also moved up on the passing yardage list beyond Wayne Peace of Florida. All these Florida quarterbacks holding the SEC records. The onside kick attempt. It's corralled by Georgia at the 46-yard line. The man with the ball is Troy Sadowski, 87. 139 to go in the ball game. And Wayne Williams, who had the 70-yard kickoff return, Put Florida in good position for the touchdown, but they still trail 23-10 with 139 to go. Vince Stooley saw this game develop just that he, as he had hoped, and oftentimes things don't go as you plan. This one went precisely according to plan for Georgia. On the first and ten now. Bulldogs will just try to run that clock out by handing it off into the backfield. That's Hampton. Not much of that time. Georgia just a few points away from being undefeated. Next week, we'll see either Auburn, Georgia, or Kentucky at Florida. Check your local listings on Monday, 1230 Eastern Time. Georgia lost to Clemson by one, lost to LSU by three, and a heartbreaker for the Bulldogs. And beat Vanderbilt, beat Kentucky. Now the victory over Florida and Georgia left Auburn week and that'll be at Athens and then Georgia Tech. The NCAA thanks its corporate partners who dedicate financial resources, talent and expertise to help emphasize the vital role intercollegiate athletics plays in society and in the overall development of student athletes. The support of higher education by these outstanding corporate citizens also provides funding for NCAA youth programs and NCAA championships. The NCAA and its corporate partners, together building a better experience for our student athletes. What does it take to compete in the Southeastern Conference? The same stuff it takes to outperform in the global marketplace. In the field of travel technology, WorldSpan is the class, the franchise player. 
the go-to guy. World Span, proud partner of the SEC. Well, those people are mostly wearing orange shirts there, I think, Tim. They didn't do much, they didn't get much exercise in the second half. They go away, I'm sure, a little discouraged by the performance of the Florida Gators, but hopeful that they will return next year as victors. Florida will go to two and three in the SEC, five and four in the season. Florida has Kentucky in Gainesville next week, and then they've got to play meat grinder called Florida State November 28th. That's at Gainesville. Florida State playing Auburn this afternoon. Second down nine from the 45. 30 to go this ball game. Banged up as they've been today, and they came in with several players playing hurt. This time of year, it happens a lot of kind of ball. But early in the game, Jeff Reuter went out. The linebacking core has really been ma mashed up this year, and Rondy Weston has a broken jaw, Roth's ankle, etc. And Galen Hall kind of said it all right there with that move. The banged up defense could not stop the Georgia ground game, and their defensive staff has done a fine job all year. Brooks and Coughlin and. Jimmy Dickey, who, who wanted me to remember to say hi to his 84-year-old mother, Lula, back in Houston, Texas. They've done a good job patching a team together. They, they've got zero depth, a lot of inexperience, and they were ranked number one in the SEC against the rush in the past coming into this game, and I'm sure that that ranking is in jeopardy after the performance by Georgia, but on the whole, when you consider the year, it's been a fine, fine job. All these Bulldogs, nobody picked them to win the SEC, and they're right in there, depending on what happens in that Alabama LSU tonight, game tonight, with Auburn coming up next week, third down four. Hampton to the 33, and Hampton heading near 100 yards. on the ground 294 they had averaged 287 a game coming into this and florida had been giving up only an average of 94 yards a game not fancy stuff bob this isn't uh, this isn't a matter of coaching and design and intricacy this is a matter of head-to-head -head, run the football block tackle minute 18 to go on the first down, Georgia just dropping down to the knee and left the clock. Run. Florida just has one timeout remaining. And Florida has used it. They will now have no timeout remaining. So Georgia will have to simply just keep grinding the clock out. And this game is history with Georgia winning by a score of 23 to 10. When you start thinking about players of the game for the Georgia Bulldogs, you know, you can talk about any of those backs, Tate, Jackson, Hampton. But you've also got to think of the fullbacks and the offensive line and the Bulldog defense. It was only three points they had given up of any significance, and that was a long field. And then the touchdown after the kickoff return, so the, the junkyard dogs have played well, too. Over the last six quarters, they've really... We saw Kentucky move the ball on them very effectively in the first half, but then they slammed the face last week. And uh, now four to foot against this uh, fine floor offense. Well, Georgia, in the last 10 years, has won seven of the game. Count this one. And Georgia will go eight and three in the last 11 games. So the Dooley years, particularly of recent, have been very good to the Bulldog fans as they played the Florida Gators. Down 12 to 35 now. Georgia runs to the Hampton. And he pops outside. Turned back inside almost as though he didn't want to add insult to injury. <laughs> I think if he stretched it outside, he has great speed. He could have taken it in. Now, a minute left. They spotted at the 20. Look at this, Tim. It looks as though he almost took it back into the defenders. Splits it out here. A good job of blocking. Watkins misses, and Oliver chased him down. He saw he didn't Oops. have it, and then all of a sudden, the pursuit hit. 
Yeah, I think that speaks a lot also for the speed of Lewis Oliver. Georgia with 310 yards rushing the ball, and the Bulldogs are 50 and 3 when the dogs rush for more than 300 yards. Well, no kidding. <laughs> and Vince Dooley just took out the offensive line. Wheeler, Burrow, Stevens. So a round of applause from the remaining red shirted Bulldog fans. We just hear here at the Gator Bowl that Florida State University is leading Auburn 14 to nothing at Auburn. Florida State, a powerhouse football team, as you well know, offensively. The question was whether they would score on the Auburn defense. Galen Hall will take them back and get them ready to play a very tough Kentucky football game at Gainesville next week. Galen's got a look at Kentucky next week and still has to face Florida State at the end of the year. But today, it belongs to the Bulldogs and Rambo John Brantley led a great Georgia defensive effort today and Vince Dooley and Galen Hall they've had does Vince Dooley has done so many times has offered condolences to the losers Georgia winning eight out of the last 11 years 